happening on Broadway Beats. Broadway Beats. Broadway Beats. Broadway Beats. Beat. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. Daniel Radcliffe will play his final performance in the hit revival of Frank Lesser's How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying on January 1st. For the next three weeks from January 3rd through the 22nd will be Glee star Darren Chris. And then on January 24th, stepping into the role of J. Pierpont Finch will be Nick Jonas of the Jonas Brothers. We're here at Sardi's for the big event. Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming out today. Very excited to make this announcement. I've been tweeting up a storm and getting my fans excited as I'm, I'm hoping that they will, will come and, and have this Broadway experience with me. And uh, fans from all over the world and, and from the, the New York and New Jersey area. And, and, and this is an amazing opportunity to come back to Broadway. Uh, I did it as a, as a young boy and was in this room last with Reba McIntyre when she was starring in Annie Get Your Gun. She was getting her picture put up on the wall. Um, I was eight years old at the time. And so about 11 years later, happy to come back and, and be on Broadway again as a man and, and, and thrilled that uh, it's this show. Such an amazing show. And once I heard about the opportunity uh, to come and be in it, I, I came and saw the show and saw Daniel. Such an amazing job. Um, and, and was so excited about the opportunities that I saw as an actor to, to really take this role on and, and sink my teeth into it and to work with this amazing team. Um, and so I want to thank you for being here and, and, and taking part in this announcement with me as it's something that I'm thrilled and, and honored and, and really humbled to be a part of. Uh, the theater experience I've had so far as an adult has been in London, which was amazing to be a part of the 25th anniversary of Les Mis. Uh, then as Link Larkin in Hairspray, the Hollywood Bowl, um, which, which was such a pleasure and saw some really great response from that from people. And so thank you for that. Um, but to come back to Broadway, to be on this stage is uh, such a pleasure. And uh, again, I'm so humbled and, and blessed to have the opportunity and, and I'm thrilled to, to see who comes out to see the show um, because, it, like, like I said, it's an experience. This really, it really is a Broadway experience and if we can draw people from all different parts of the world to come be a part of this, uh, it would be a real pleasure for me. And I, and I feel like it's, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of people's first Broadway experience and um, I'm considering it my first Broadway experience again, coming back and, and looking forward to sharing that with everyone. And so thank you again for coming out today. I think we're going to open it up to some questions now, but yeah, it's, it's a real pleasure. So thank you. How did this all happen? Well, I mean, our producers are brilliant, I have to tell you. We have, we have some amazing producers that help generate those ideas and, and help think outside the box. You know, and then, and I get calls from, from them that say, what about, what about, what about this, if we go this way? And then, it, it's so, it's so exciting to have a partner in, in keeping a show going and replacing actors in a, in a, in a musical. It's not always the way, but when you have really smart, savvy producers behind you who love it, love the, the, the game of that as well. So, um, I was thrilled when the possibility of, of, of Nick came up, so. And I'm thrilled that he left the show. And I'm thrilled that we're here today, to be honest, because he's such a talented guy, really. So what kind of conversations have you had? And what do you look for in a Finch? And why do you think he'll be so perfect? Well, I mean, obviously, you have to be that triple threat that we talked about. You have to be able to do it all, act, sing, and dance. But you have to, you have, to have the charm. You have to have charm. You have to be charming. And I think you also have to be serious in a certain kind of way as well. I think it's not about being flip. I mean, Finch is very calculated in his miscalculations, and I think that's very important. And so that, that's one thing you look at. I think the key ingredient when you get past the talent is the charm. And this gentleman certainly has that, along with Darren and along with Dan. When you were working with all the three different Finches, I mean, Daniel, I mean, it's obviously acting, singing, and dancing, man, total triple threat. I'm sure Darren's going to be the same thing, and, I'm, and I know this man is going to be the same thing. Do you start on something first? Is there a, a system you work on, Finch, or is it all, all different? I think, that, I, mean, I, I, I think always you want to get the, the, the basics going in each department. You know, basic music rehearsal, so that gets going, all running parallel to each other. Get the dance going, get the music going, and get some scene work going. But not put it all together until there's proficiency in each. I think that's the way to do it. Because if you just concentrate on what it would be like in school, like doing your whole year of math, and then doing your whole year of English, and then your whole year, because that's not how the world works. You have to kind of spread it out. So that's, that's how we work. That's how we train our finches.
what's the biggest thrill for you when you go to the theater every night and watch a performance of the show? What goes through your mind? I'm just thrilled that young people want to um, support this uh, the tradition of musical theater and, and traditional musical theater. I mean, I love, I love, I mean, I love the newer musicals that are taking, that are pushing the limits, you know, the Spring Awakenings and the American Idiots and all those things. I love them. They're brilliant. But also I love the classics and I love the more traditional and the fact that these young people who don't need to do it, who aren't using it as any kind of stepping stone to something, that's just they're passionate about doing it and wanting to do it. Um, and I, uh, I respect that and I love that. Uh, and besides the audience they bring in. Not just an audience like, oh good, butts in the seat, but I'm talking about education of a whole different group of people that come to, they come to the Hirschfeld to see Nick Jonas and go home having seen a Broadway musical. That's what's thrilling. And then maybe they'll go see something else, you know? And I think it's a great way to, uh, to make our audience grow. Welcome home to Broadway. How does it feel? So, so pleased to be back here. Um, my brother Kevin went and saw the show here in New York and, and said that I must come and be in it. And, um, so I, I talked with the producers after sort of doing some research and felt like the perfect role after seeing the show. And um, I always said my return to Broadway would have to feel right. And I'm just so blessed to have the opportunity. And uh, after doing a couple musical theater opportunities in different parts of the world to come back here to Broadway, uh, a place that I consider home, a second home, is, is such a blessing. And, uh, looking forward to getting my fans behind it, having them be a part of this experience and uh, getting the Broadway community behind it as well and hopefully having that camaraderie and, and really feeling like this is a family, you know, coming back together again. Tell me what you love about the show so far and the role. The show is so amazing and, and, and the look of the show, the, the way it sounds and, and the, the feeling that you have after you leave the theater, uh, which is always something that I, I think about when I go to see a show is how does it make me feel and what opportunities do I see as an actor um, if I'm looking at it that way. And, uh, this show, I saw so many opportunities to, to really get in there and sink my teeth into the role and, and, and think about you know, how I can be my own Finch. And uh, I'm looking forward to feeling that and, and working with this amazing team and, and getting comfortable with this choreography and, and you know, feeling, feeling the part. Did you talk to Rob Ashford already? Yeah, we have. We've spoken quite a bit today, actually, already, and um, just talked about the role, talked about um, you know, questions that I had about it. And, uh, different things that I saw, different opportunities, and um, I think it's going to be a great partnership, and, and I'm looking forward to just picking his brain more and, and um, really digging in on the different elements of Finch. What are you looking forward to the most with the eight show a week? Uh, the eight show a week is, is going to be great. Um, when I was over in London doing Les Mis, I uh, did it for about two and a half months and really enjoyed the sort of steady eight show a week job feeling of it because it really provides for you to give something more each show to create a different experience that night than you had the last and that's a different audience every night and they deserve a different show even though you're going to the same spot and you're singing the same song to give them something different a different feeling and, and to uh, really make it your own version is is key I think there's nothing like a Broadway audience specifically the one at this show I've seen the show numerous times there's nothing like a how to succeed audience what was it like the night you went it was electric. Um, you know, I think the, the audience in How to Succeed is so thrilled to be there, first of all. And, and um, you know, the, the material of the show is, is older at this point, but it is still so current. You know, and the jokes all land. And I loved that, that even, um, even now in 2011, almost 2012, all these jokes are landing and, and people are laughing their heads off and really enjoying the experience overall because the look is so fresh and, and so inventive. And, and uh, the overall experience is, is one that you can't deny. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that. You have millions of fans. What I love about you going in this show is so many people are going to see a Broadway show for the very first time because of you, and you're going to change their whole experience about going to the theater. How does it make you feel? It's a real blessing to think about it that way. Um, you know, I, I, I love getting my fans behind things, and uh, my brothers and I have been blessed to perform and, and, and record together for about seven years, and so, so to, to kind of go and do things that we're, we're passionate about on our own and then eventually come back together uh, is, a, is a great honor for all of us and, and getting our fans excited about the individual projects as well as the groups um, is, is an amazing opportunity because they are some of the most passionate fans in the world and uh, for those that haven't been to a Broadway show before I want this to be their experience and um, for those that have and, and uh, that, that are fans of musical theater and, and all that I, I hope that they can really take ownership of this and, and uh, make it their experience and, and enjoy it with me. My final question is, what are you looking forward to the most with doing Broadway again and starring in this great show? 
Uh, the thing I'm looking forward to most is being in front of the Broadway audience. It really is such a, a beautiful thing and such a, a real honor, and I don't take that lightly. Uh, the Broadway fans are amazing, and uh, their passion for theater is, is unlike anything else in the world. And, uh, I, I believe that my fans and the fans of the work that I've done so far will get behind that in the same way, and um, we're in the bow tie. You know, I'm looking forward to putting the bow tie on and getting comfortable in this role.